Now I would like to introduce you the president of Texas Turkish American Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Celal Yaka, for his speech. Mr. Yaka, please. Commissioner, distinguished guests, and dear friends, welcome to third annual dinner of Texas Turkish American Chambers of Commerce. We are at the end of the holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan is a time for spiritual reflection, prayer, and doing of good deeds. Fasting is intended to inculcate self-discipline and generosity. In Turkey, there is an old saying, your homeland is not where you were born. It is where you earn your life. Some of our fathers came to United States 300 years ago. Some of us just came to the state three days ago. But United States is home for all of us. United States is the land of freedom. United States is the land of justice. United States is the land of opportunity. United States is the land of richness. Shortly, United States is an excellent harmony for all of us. We must work together, hand to hand, to keep this harmony going. We are only a few days from September 11. As Texas Turkish American Chambers of Commerce, we believe terrorist activities, regardless of who the perpetrators are or wherever they come from, at the most evil blow to peace. Terrorist action cannot be forgiven. It doesn't matter for what motive it is conducted. Terror can never succeed. Thank you very much for your coming to our dinner. And I want to a special thank the commissioner to join us to the evening. Thank you very much. First and foremost, this is such a wonderful group. Gwen and I are thrilled to be here this evening. We've worked with numerous members of the Turkish American community on a variety of subjects. And in fact, at tonight's dinner table, uh, we were speaking of other ways to, to get the community involved, not just locally, but across the state uh, in politics and government. And you don't know it, but you're planning trips to Austin during the next legislative session. Uh, we're planning other events in people's homes. These are all being planned down here while you're having dinner. Uh, so uh, that, that will, those will, will bear fruit shortly. But the real reason I'm happy to be here, aside from introducing our, our wonderful speaker, is it gives me an opportunity to remind all of you of, of two things that I talk about all the time as Harris County judge. First and foremost, Harris County is perhaps the most successfully diverse county in the entire country. And when I say successfully diverse, there are a lot of places where you have different ethnic groups and different races, but I can think of nowhere that I've been where the functionality was as good as it is here. And a lot of that credit goes to groups like the Texas Turkish American Chamber of Commerce, because you don't separate yourselves. You engage in the community. You take others to Turkey. You bring people from Turkey here, and, and you see yourselves as a vibrant part of the community, which is as it should be. The second reason, anytime anybody gives me a microphone these days, I will always talk about one thing, and that's the future of Harris County, and the fact that we are perfectly positioned to be the gateway of North America. Our future relies on global trade. And if you look at a map or a globe, the perfect position to serve North America is on the Gulf Coast of Texas. And you will begin to see more and more global trade come through the ports, not just of Houston, but Freeport and Galveston and Texas City and Beaumont and Port Arthur and Corpus Christi. And all those, all those ports in Texas will become vital. And when you see statistics like Texas being the 11th largest economy and Turkey being the 16th largest economy in the world, 
it doesn't take a genius to figure out that those two economies are going to do business together. And that means trade. And that means we need to do everything we can to ensure that that trade goes forward. Now to my real pleasure this evening, and that's introducing our speaker. And I warned her that uh, people give me write-ups of how to introduce them, but I always ignore those and say what I want to say. And I mentioned diversity. Well, I find this a fascinating evening. I am introducing a sixth generation Texan to a group of people who came here from Turkey. Think about that. That speaks volumes about who we are as a society. I'm also introducing a railroad, I'm, I'm a county judge, but I'm not really a judge. I'm not even a lawyer. I'm introducing a railroad commissioner. She has nothing to do with railroads. <laughs> if you can figure this out, you're far better than the average voter in the state of Texas. But all of you know the Railroad Commission <clears throat> is really anywhere else would be called the Energy Commission, the Oil and Gas Commission. And a lot of people, to put this in perspective, uh, people who don't understand how OPEC got formed, well, OPEC is modeled after the Texas Railroad Commission. And not many people realize that. But when the, when the East Texas oil field came in in the 1930s, uh, the Texas Railroad Commission was given regulatory oversight, and they were the ones that established allowables in oil wells, and the rest, as they say, is history. And over the years, the Railroad Commission uh, has produced some true giants in Texas history and Texas lore. Uh, I will confess to you, I do not admit failures very often, there aren't many in this room, and perhaps Commissioner Jones doesn't even realize this. I actually ran for the Railroad Commission once. I was chairman of the Texas House Committee on Energy, ran for the Railroad Commission, and lost. So she's already accomplished something that I wasn't able to accomplish. But I would be remiss if I didn't really leave it at this. Her extensive background includes two terms in the Texas legislature, she was elected to the third term, but the governor of Texas asked her to take on a new, larger duty, and that is to fill a vacancy on the Texas Railroad Commission, which she has done ably since 2005. But I'm really pleased to introduce Elizabeth Ames Jones this evening for another reason, and that is I know those of you in this room like to meet leaders, you like to meet policymakers. But it's even more important to meet leaders and policymakers where they are now, understanding that they have a tremendous future in front of them. And the woman that I am proudly introducing tonight, Elizabeth Ames Jones, Commissioner of the Texas Railroad Commission, is a leader already, but she will be a leader for the state of Texas for many years to come. So it's my pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Ames Jones.